Pascal, we're very happy to have you because I know that you were one of the first people who said the European Commission needs to issue at least 200 billion euros for this plan to be credible. But I want to ask you, the obvious question at this point is, who is going to buy these bonds? Who are you hearing is interested in buying them? Well, hello first. Well, all the institutional investors. I mean, before uh, suggesting to uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the Commission, uh, to go for such a uh, huge uh, uh, issuance of green bonds, I checked with some uh, market participants and they told me that there was no issue. I mean, it will be absorbed uh, by the market over the next years because, of course, it's not 225 uh, billion euros at the same time, it will be over time over the next years, mm -hmm. and we can expect around 100 billion next year in 2021. Okay, and, and that's a very good point because the other question is the timeline. You know, it's it's a lot of money, it's it's a big package. When are we going to see the commission issue for the first time? And roughly, I know you've just mentioned a figure there, but but, but what does the plan look like in the next few years? What's the timeline uh, when it comes to the issuance? So nothing will come before next year because the recovery plan will be mm -hmm. formally adopted uh, by the member states and by the parliament here in Brussels uh, at the end of the year. So the first issuance will be put on the market uh, beginning of next year. And then the precise timing of the issuance, uh, the program uh, of the issues of bonds, to be honest, I don't think it's already set by the Commission. They are precisely after the political mm -hmm. announcement last week uh, by van der Leyen, they, they are now working on the precise timeline also with market participants to, to, and other national treasurers because, you know, it's the very first time ever that the European Commission uh, issues such a huge amount of bonds, whether they are greens or not. So it's a new territory, so that's why we need, uh, before going to the market, we need to adjust everything, of course, with market participants, but also with the member states. Right, and, and I know you, you mentioned this is still a, an ongoing negotiation and nothing will happen until next year when it comes to uh, those bonds hitting the market. But I do wonder, do you have any clues, hints as to whether this is going to be 10-year bonds, whether we could get into 30, 5-year, anything that, that kind of signals what the structure is going to look like? I can't tell you anything for sure because as I told you, it's a work in progress. Now the political decision is made. Now they are working on the, let's say, technicalities. But it would make sense to have a long maturity for green bonds. And anyway, as you know, the European Recovery Plan, uh, it's, a third, it's a three decades plan. Uh, it will be paid back over time up to 2058. So that's why uh, it would make sense to have long-term bonds and even more maybe for green bonds. Uh, but as I told you, the, all, all that is being refined, defined and, and fine-tuned, I would say, as I speak. So I, I can't uh, go public. Uh, it's a bit too early to go public now with that kind of uh, information. Well, I hope we'll hear from you soon. But uh, I also wanted to ask you about the European Central Bank because uh, Christine Lagarde uh, will be speaking before the European Parliament today. She has said many times that climate change should be top of the agenda. What's the role that the European Central Bank could play here? You know, should it become a big buyer of this? Uh, actually, it's very likely that the, the European bonds whether they are greens or not, again, but if we focus on the green bonds, so one third of the whole recovery package financing, I, nobody is really in fear of not finding its way to the market because it's safe, it's backed by the, probably uh, one of the most uh, stable economies in the world. So th there is no fear around this. So I, can't, I don't see uh, the ECB as uh, the prime role of the ECB as buying these bonds, green bonds or not, on the market. But the, when it comes to climate change, it's about being able to uh, have the ECB on board as it's uh, regarding, sorry, regarding its own uh, account management. 
meaning that Christine Lagarde said a couple of times already before the parliament that she is working together with the, the team of the ECB uh, to the possibility of having a sort of carbon filter to the uh, assets mm -hmm. they buy and to the assets they sell. And of course, if the ECB in the coming, uh, in the coming months starts making a difference when it buys or when it sells the, regarding the carbon intensity or the impact of climate change or these assets, that will make a huge difference in terms of perception of risk, in terms of liquidity mm. for the market's participants. That will be, a, to my view, that will be a game changer. Because imagine you are an investor or you are a bank and you buy a, 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 a share of a carbon intensive company and you have the ECB saying, well, it will cost you more if you want to give it and to pass it to the ECB account. And of course, the opposite for the green assets. That will make a very a big difference, substantial difference. And of course, it's still under discussion. Christine Lagarde said that it could be an option uh, once the ECB would have uh, redrafted uh, and readopted its new right. doctrine regarding uh, climate change. And we expect this to be uh, done uh, next year, let's say uh, the second quarter of next year.